Hey everybody, Retro Gaming Guy here. So today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review this 64-bit handheld video game console that I recently picked up on Amazon for just $43.99. So let's unbox this and see what's waiting for us because there's absolutely no branding on here. There's very little information. It just on the side walks through the different port options, but we're gonna dive into that. So let's get started. All right, guys, here is our box. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. So console sitting right here on top. Let's see what comes with this though. All right, so we have a USB-A to USB-C charging cable right in here. We also have a manual, and this is called the Flip Series, although, again, here is the cover of this. There's no mention anywhere on here where it says Flip Series, but whatever. It says Video Game Consoles Flip Series. We'll open this up. So it gives us product list, tells us what the contents are. So we have our manual. We have our USB to USB-A. Um, you know, cables, we have the console, and then it says here we have a battery. I assume the battery's, you know, obviously already in here. Uh, what else does it say? It says special notice. Um, so it does walk through operational problems and um, just gives you information on how to actually navigate this and also tells you what your different controls are on here. So it does seem to be fairly thorough. It does also walk through the controls, but we'll walk through that. I think it'll be pretty self-explanatory there. So Let's take a look at the actual console. So it did say that there was a battery included. Let's make sure and that's fully accessible through this back panel. So go ahead and slide it back in, click it into place. So we have our L1, L2, R1, and R2 shoulder and trigger buttons located up here. And this is actually Pow Kitty, it says right on here. It says Pow Kitty, clear as day right there. But again, no branding anywhere on the front or back side of the box, none on the um, listing on Amazon either saying Pow Kitty. So interesting that it says Pow Kitty right here. Okay, I'm actually a fairly uh, decent fan of uh, Pow Kitty. They put out some good stuff. So here is the handheld. So we've got our A, B, X, and Y four button configuration. Start and select right here in the middle. We've got what I assume is either a menu or a reset button dead center and then our D-pad. So going on the left hand side, we have a little switch or um, you know a little toggle right here to bring the volume up. And then we also have a on or off right over here on the other side. So pretty straightforward, three inch IPS screen right here. And then it simply flips when you are done with it. So, I mean, I definitely like the design and here is our type C port. So that is how we're going to charge this. And then we even have a audio jack right there. Now we have two speakers built in down here as well. So let's uh, flip this on and see it's actually in the on position here. So I assume this is going to need to be charged a little bit here. Interesting that they sent it on. So if there was any battery charge on here, that would be completely out of the uh, question now. So I'm gonna have to charge this up and I'll resume once it's got a little juice to it. But there is a micro SD card right here, which I didn't even notice right off the bat there. And that is going to give us 64 gigabytes here. It is an unbranded card, but 64 gigabytes. So I wonder how many games are included on here, but let me uh, charge this up and We'll jump back into it once it's got a little juice. All right, guys, so here we are booted up into this. Hopefully you guys can see. I'm gonna actually try to zoom in. You can see how everything is laid out, but I'm gonna zoom in actually on the screen. So hopefully this makes it a little bit easier, uh, even if I am cutting off the controls, but we took a closer look at those already. So this is how we boot in and we can actually use our shoulder buttons left and right to navigate across the top. So here's our game collections. So we get a little abbreviation and an icon for each of the collections on here. We have some ports in here. We also have settings, uh, skins, so we can adjust the layout. Um, and then of course we can go over here to actually power this down, you know, safely rather than just cutting the power to this, you know, externally on the actual handheld. So let's go over to the game collection. So we've got Game Boy in here. We've got Game Boy Color in here. We've got uh, Family Computer in here. We've got Super Famicom in here. We've got Sega Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive, PlayStation. Wow, I'm impressed that PlayStation's on here, but um, I'm not sure I'm buying it. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to emulate PlayStation on here. Not that it is super demanding. I'm just trying to find the angle to give you guys the best view here. I think it's going to be a little bit tough with this small screen, but uh, in person, it actually looks pretty sharp. Neo Geo Pocket, Wonder Swan, PC Engine. Uh, what would that be? Uh, FB, FB, uh, what is that? Blanking on that one. Oh, F Final Burn Alpha. Okay, cool. Um, so to exit, we hit our start button. Cool. So, all right. So that's everything in here. Let's go into Game Boy. And I'm not sure if it's going to actually calculate how many titles we have in here. 
Oh, all right, 204 titles in here, according to this. And I'm just going to scroll through this just to make sure it doesn't like jump in numbers, but it does have a list over there on the left-hand side of all of the titles with a number next to them. Yeah, it seems to be accurate. So that's pretty cool. So I, I see we have the Mortal Kombat's in here. I saw some WWF games in here. Um, pretty, pretty good. Terminator 2 is in here. Sweet. And we have featured games, so that would be like an easier way to navigate through here. But, of course, you got to make sure that it has exactly what you're looking for. So that's cool. we got Game Boy Advance over here next. We'll go into Game Boy Advance. And I just want to get the game count. So we have 110 Game Boy Advance titles. And we can find by letter, too. So that's good. We don't have to just comb through here because you'll notice that it's not in alphabetical order. So we can make it alphabetical order, basically, by going in here. And it at least, at least breaks it down. So like... A, B, C. Yeah, it breaks it up into sections and then it is in alphabetical order. So definitely like that. That's something that I certainly complain about a lot in my videos, just making stuff findable easily without wasting a ton of time. So inside here we have classic games. And it looks like there's... Okay. Just getting an idea of the breakdown here. So... This is in alphabetical order as well, and it just breaks it down by the number here. So we have it broken down into sections, which is, you know, decent enough. It, it does get us through it. Super Famicom over here. So we just go into classic games. You can see that there's over 312 titles in here, or exactly 312 titles in here. And I will jump into some of the games here so we can, you know, test out exactly what the experience is like on here. Game Gear, we have 40 Game Gear games. Master System, we have 99 Master System games. Mega Drive, 605 games. PlayStation, uh, we don't have a count on PlayStation, but let me scroll through it a little bit. Seems like a lot of PlayStation games, actually. So we're in the M's now. We're on what would be like the third or fourth page. So, wow, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 is in here. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm buying that this is going to work. I know I said that before, but uh, PS isn't that hard to emulate. But, I mean, this is a very, very, very small, um, you know, handheld here. So I'm, I'm just not really buying it. We're going to test it out, though. All right, so we'll back out. Neo Geo Pocket has 51 games. Wonder Swan has 99 games. 99, yeah, 99 games, okay. PC Engine has 99 games as well. And Final Burn Alpha has... It uh, doesn't look like there's a count on here either. But it does seem like a large amount of games. The only thing that sucks about this is it's the file names. It's not broken down with like the actual titles. Like for Punisher, it works out because it, it gives you like the full name. But if you were looking for T for the Punisher, then I, I suppose it could be a bit of a challenge there. But not too bad. Okay, cool. And we have Metal Slug in here. We've got some Marvel superheroes in here too. All right, so we'll back out of that one. And that's all of our collections. So let's dive into some gameplay demos and see exactly what the experience is like using this.
All right, guys, we jumped in here. We unboxed Nemo and reviewed what we now know is a Pow Kitty 64 bit portable handheld game console here. And uh, the ask for this on Amazon is $43.99. I think it's worth that. I, I love it. I think it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's got great performance on here. There's no lags or delays in the majority of collections. The only downside was PlayStation. And I called that right off the bat. Something this small and compact and lightweight just is not going to be able to effectively emulate PlayStation. PlayStation is not what I would call a demanding emulator by any means, but for something like this, it is. So I didn't you know, come into this with the expectations to play PlayStation. I figured the focus of this would be on your old school stuff, your early home consoles, and that's what it does very well on here. There was no issues with any of the other collections I jumped into. And you got to remember, there's tons and tons of games on here ready to go. You could fire this up and be inside of Super Mario Brothers or Sonic the Hedgehog in a matter of probably... 25 30 seconds so just the fact that we have so many sonic and super mario games on here i think that makes it worth it right there alone um game boy advance is awesome on here game boy is awesome on here uh, mega drive master system those are some of my most favorite collections and then super famicom is definitely a win as well so you can get into all of those extremely well. It's very easy to set up and to play. I wouldn't use this necessarily to do like full playthroughs or to spend a lot of time on here. So I'm not even really concerned with battery life in all honesty. This is just something that you could throw in your jean pocket or your, your jacket pocket, pull out when you have a few minutes to play a game. Like for me, if I'm waiting for my kids outside of practice, you know, I might have 10, 15 minutes to kill rather than being on YouTube. Maybe I pull this out and I play a couple levels of Sonic the Hedgehog. It's totally worth it for $43.99 you know, to do something like that and to have a very portable, lightweight setup like this on the go. So I don't know if this would last you know, years and years. If I got a year out of this, I'd be thrilled. You know, Could I open this up and smash it right in half right now if I wanted to? Sure, absolutely. It's all plastic. It's relatively cheap quality. But if you took care of this, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't last. Um, and you know, buttons are responsive. The volume on here is pretty decent. It doesn't get super loud, but you'd never really be in a situation where you'd be cranking the volume, you know, really high anyways. You do have the audio jack in the front there, so you could plug in a headset if you wanted to. But for what it is, I think it's a pretty sweet deal. I like the shoulder buttons on the back. It's comfortable to use. We've got a pretty decent screen on here as well, just three inches, but it is pretty clear. I know in the video, it doesn't look nearly as good as it does in person, but I, I like it. I, th I think it's definitely something that I would use here and there on the go, um, you know, and I think it would be a good experience. But let me know what you guys think in the comments here of this video. Is this something that you would use or is it just too delicate and too compact for what you'd be into? Everybody is into their own thing. So let me know what you guys think, though, of this Pow Kitty 64-bit portable handheld game console that you can, again, pick up on Amazon right now for $43.99. So I'll put a link up here at the top of your screen if you want to get additional information on this. But again, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the content today, give me a thumbs up on the video. Huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.